welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. This is part two of the sketchbook tour, the 2020 sketchbook tour. If you haven't seen part one, I will have that linked below, but also head over there just so you can catch up and see some context of the first half of the sketchbook tour. I also have a couple of other sketchbook tours from previous years, so 2018 and 2019. I have a playlist down below but I will also link the other sketchbooks below as well. So if you're new here consider subscribing or if you've been watching for quite some time and you keep coming back for more I think I've earned that subscribe and notification. It really helps out my channel, helps out my art, helps me to create more art. It all works as a big functional mechanism together so any help would be well appreciated so remember to like and subscribe. But other than that let's just get into the video and let's go! Okay everyone so we're going to get into part two. Like I said in the first video, everything that you see here, all the materials, references, everything I discuss, extra videos, will all be in the description. So make sure you pop over there and um, have a little peruse of the description to see all the things that I'm discussing in this video. Okay, so I think with this spread, I was doing one of those, you know, those timed reference websites when you just fill out the form and then it gives you like quick references. That's what I was kind of going with here. I think these are all like five minute drawings, maybe a little longer, maybe 10. I can't quite do the 30 second ones. I think those are insane. You know, when you do life drawing and they change poses every 30 seconds, then it gets a bit longer and a bit longer. I think maybe that's what was going on here, but then I kind of extended the time a little bit more. I think those life drawings things don't work at the scale I need to go bigger and something again I want to do more of in the future because I find that the life studies have just helped so much in helping me actually put some hands and feet together and I just feel so much more confident drawing bodies after doing a lot of life studies. Again trying to just do a bunch of facial expressions trying to do a lot more you know ethnicity so I'm not just constantly painting white ladies I know I know I get a lot of like kind of shady comments about that I know I'm trying as well I know I'm a person of color and I need to represent my own kind and put that into artworks but hey I'm trying to like undo years of what I've been given as what the ideal beauty standards are so I'm trying to untrain that in myself too you know. Again I'm experimenting with just like a lot of different colors in the faces. I quite like this girl. She has a really intense like brutish really cool vibe to her like she does shot put at university or something like you know she's just cool. You know a couple of coquettish girls, pretty crapola figure studies if I do say so myself but you know I'm trying, I'm trying. If you're a little stuck on life studies and you just hate doing them, try to just not do them in black pencil. I try and do them you know in like pens and use my watercolors. If you want to like liven it up but you still need to study and skill up, pop some color into it because trust me it makes you feel so much better and makes you feel not so crap happy about yourself because life drawing is really hard. Step away from the black pencil when you're doing life studies. Doing it the more traditional way you really learn to use your tones properly etc etc but one thing at a time why not just make it fun for yourself uh, while you're studying. I'm getting a couple of memories of maybe doing this spread on a plane. I just remember drawing this particular little square on a plane. Not sure. Again, I think here I was just trying to do more figure studies. You can never do enough figure and face studies, truly. I'm just trying to get my numbers up as much as possible, get my quantity up. So although maybe it's a little repetitive for you guys, it's just something that I have to do to skill up. Yeah, just a couple more figure studies, doing some more athletes, just because uh, athletic poses have really amazing, grand, gestural, lots of motion in them. So I'm just trying to do that a lot more in my pieces. Again, Again, doing a little like palm springs mid-century little doodle over here you know with the cool palm trees and the old school cars i like the vibe it's the right vibe you know a little mountainscape i quite like how it's like split in the middle here something i kind of want to play more with in the future again doing those like super stylized landscapes I like how the landscape and the cloud kind of like come out of it. It's kind of cute. I might try and recreate this digitally. I think when it comes to landscapes, I need to switch over and do them digitally so I can just fill in color really quickly and focus on my form and lighting more. I think that's actually kind of where I'm going wrong with my landscapes. I can't do them quick enough with watercolor. I don't know. Just a thought, just a thought. 
this postcard over here available in my shop these tarot cards also available in my shop but not for long because i am running low of the sample cards this is what i mean when i when it comes to landscapes like i can't get the colors down quick enough and i want to work on them like super super quickly i think i need to switch over to gouache when it comes to doing landscape and environment studies this guy over here i quite liked he had a very interesting like side pose but i messed up the feet so you know just gotta cover that and like it didn't happen we don't talk about them feet here i think she's from memory something i'm trying to do a lot more of so i'm not so beholden to the reference yeah i like her like uh laissez-faire uh attitude her like uh i'm so over this actually her expression is very 2020 don't you think just like i'm i'm done i'm so so done with this <laughs> Another one of my tarot cards. I did buy a bunch of stamps because there was an art store closing down. I bought way too many stencils, half of them I haven't used, and a bunch of stamps. So some cute little butterfly insect stamps um, and I got some like pads as well. I call them page fillers. If you're really stressed about filling up a sketchbook, get stamps, get stencils. You know, you can just do one or two or three a page, get some stickers. I like to fill it up. It takes the pressure off and then you're filling up the, the sketchbook a lot quicker. So a little hot tip. I have a very distinct memory with this guy because I, ha I tried to spend one Sunday without like watching anything, without any music and uh, without any social media. So I was trying to just spend a Sunday like completely devoid of electronics. I didn't last long because I, I was so desperate to listen to music, but that's what this guy reminds me of. It has nothing to do with the actual drawing, just, you know, giving you some context of what the lifestyle looked like. A cute little Harlequin chick. Just again, trying to use the same colors and the same mediums throughout the whole page. Quite like this creepy hand over here. Something again I'd like to experiment with more in the future, some more like overextended, exaggerated poses. All right, some more failed landscapes, some like pretty crappy poses, and then a kind of cute ghost in the shell-ish gal. I think this chick's actually pretty worthy of an Instagram post. I might do that. I just really like the, the ear that pokes out amongst the blue, something that Again, I'd like to experiment with more in the future with future pieces. Some more facial studies from the website that I mentioned before, the quick, the quick time studies. Just trying to do a bunch of like expressions. You guys are probably familiar with it if you do a lot of studies, especially with the website that I'm talking about because I see these faces everywhere. A pretty bare bones page, hey. Uh, again, these are some cute portraits that I did from the time studies. Trying to do some more studies of people with different facial features. Yeah, just trying to use every color again. Nothing too amazing. I quite like all the different colors in this gal over here, but again, I think they could be a little richer. More body studies over here. For some reason, I'm just not vibing the colors here. I don't like it. That's all we're gonna say about it. A bit of a little brainstorming session on temperance. Quite interesting actually to revisit now. I've painted the temperance card maybe a month or two ago. I started the brainstorming part for it, possibly at the end of 2019. If you can see here, a little thumbnail of temperance. The original idea for the card is I wanted the card to be a lot more sassy. It looked a little bit too silly, especially for the tone of the cards. I was trying to go a little bit richer with my colors in this one, which I think were a little fail. This last over here is really good. I, I'm trying really hard to figure out how to do a lot more negative space when it comes to my watercolors. I just don't have enough discipline to like leave all of the untouched parts, but you know, I'm still learning. And then this, this, this one, this one here is no good. These two are from a film as well. So name the movie if you know the movie. And then this cute little angel, um, she's from Pinterest somewhere. I really like the darker hued hands. I think they're really cute and something I'd like to experiment more in the future. Moving on. Oh, a very minimal page. Okay, so here I'm doing some brainstorming for the justice card and also working again on temperance. So the card kind of turned out to be more in this vein rather than like the other pose that I mentioned. I liked in the thumbnail how the feet came out like really big and yeah, just really experimenting with the scale of all the different features. Two more studies for temperance. Mix these two elements together and then you get the temperance card. One of the thumbnail ideas for justice. And then here, 
my most popular card. This is, these are the original thumbnails of what I was trying to figure out with the strength card. The intention I was kind of going for with the original, it didn't really turn out like that with the, with the uh, final card, but I think the final card came out just the way it should have. Because I was working on the strength card and designing that card, a lot of the designing goes on in my iPad, so you won't see a lot of it in here. I kind of do the rough thumbnails here and then go into iPad sketching. But because I knew that there was going to be a tiger in the strength card, I just needed to upskill my tiger drawing. So that's what this little dude is doing over here. And some more facial studies. Very rarely draw Asian men, so I'm trying to do that a little bit more. Cards from a couple of tattoo artists from a tattoo convention. I went to. This girl here is the original study for the strength card. If you know that card you're probably familiar with this pose. And then again another Asian profile. I really didn't leave enough space for the back of her head. She didn't turn out all that great. I remember being very frustrated with her because she's like the original sketch was really good and then as soon as I started painting it it just like it fell apart doing another tiger study and also experimenting with some other poses because I was thinking maybe the woman and the tiger could be facing each other a little bit more. I don't know, I was just was playing around with a couple of ideas. This sketch over here is later on turned into the Fool. Oh, which I have up here. Oh, that's cool. You can see the two comparisons together. So yeah, that's what this original pose later on turned into this. So that's kind of exciting, kind of cool. Here I'm just studying a brutalist building. I love brutalism. I love mid-century um, architecture. I love art deco architecture. I love brutalism. Very divisive people, you know, don't like it all too much, but you know, the inner sci-fi nerd in me absolutely loves it. So sorry, not sorry, I love brutalism. A more involved page, that's nice. Again, just trying to study lots of different positions. So I'm never really studying fabric layering, especially in different angles and such. So that's what I was trying to go with here. Costume is really important for character development and people identifying characters really quickly. So it's something that I'm trying to work on a lot more and develop further, uh, thus this character. Uh, I quite like the more balanced feminine and masculine energy characters. That's just my vibe. This character I'm just vibing with and I'd like to do more, you know, tactical chick characters. Bugs, trying to do a lot more bugs because bugs are very popular. Every time I draw bugs people froth, so I'm just trying to get my bug drawings up there. I also want to incorporate them a lot more in future paintings, so just trying to do that. This was a video, I'm pretty sure, this spread, which explains why it is a lot more involved and I'm trying to, you know, make something really beautiful and epic. So like I said in part one, I have a little like goal list of things I'm trying to achieve in the sketchbook and things to kind of focus on, things that I want to upskill in. One of the things that's mentioned is landscapes. In landscapes comes a lot of rocks. Uh, I'm trying to get my rock studies up there because, well, rocks are a nice filler. They're a nice filler when you're complementing a character and also solidifying them on contacted ground. They're just a nice texture to compliment a character. Now in April I did an art challenge, a daily prompt challenge, and this I think is part of day two. Yeah, day two. Like I didn't really like this drawing but I posted it anyway in the um, April vlog so you can go and uh, watch that if you missed it or if you're new here or you can re-watch it just to get reacquainted with the with the challenge and you know get caught up with it all. Now this gal over here, you guys will recognize this lady as <clears throat> the Empress. There she is. And look, she she's quite influenced by the color palette that is in the spread, in the sketchbook spread. So, you know, that's a little interesting tidbit, a little behind the scenes fact. <laughs> but yeah, this is one of the initial sketches for the Empress. I wanted her to feel very powerful, seductive, but not like trying too hard. Like she's reclined in the chair and she's just like naturally very sexy. The women that don't try very hard and they just ooze confidence, that's like the sexiest. 
part of a sexy woman um, is her confidence and her inner self-assurance and her self-esteem so that's what I wanted to put into this card if you haven't seen this video of the Empress I will have that linked below as well this spread, I don't know why, I just really, really like this particular spread. It's something about the colors in this little block here. I think mostly because I was painting with, I must have been painting with the acrylic gouache. And I think to bite the bullet and just buy a massive pack of them because I just love the texture and how like instant the color and the pigment is when it comes to acrylic gouache. I just like these tr this, this trio over here. They're just really, really cute. I don't know. I'm just vibing them. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. That's what a cool, I didn't even make this connection, but I drew these, the page after this gal and the plant, you know, made its way into the final artwork. Showing you the final artworks mixed in with the sketchbook stuff. A little bit interesting and you can kind of see the connections that I've been talking about when it comes to why I try to dedicate as much time to the sketchbook as possible. For me, it always helps the final artworks. What I'm trying to achieve in, in future artworks is the spontaneity and the looseness that the sketchbooks have. I think that part, the effortlessness of it is just really beautiful of like, you know, not trying too hard and making everything like perfectly rendered. It's something I really want to work on in the future, but deconstructing your artwork uh, comes after years and years of building and building. So I think Picasso is probably the best example of that. What's his famous quote? I'll put it up on screen so you understand what I'm trying to talk about. <laughs> Deconstructing and unlearning everything after learning all you can about art and making the hardest lesson uh, to undo all of the tight, tight drawing and painting that I've been doing. So an example that I'm trying to explain here is that I love the looseness of the little leaves in the background here. And although it's not perfect, it's something that I wanna try and work on a lot more in the future. Okay, if you guys watched the April Art Challenge, you will be acquainted with this spread over here. I drew this initially before the April Art Challenge. Just like I said, play and get better at doing rocks. I don't know why they boggle my mind. I just can't see them as like big block shapes. All I see is micro little details and I'm trying to unlearn that. But I really like this girl. She kind of reminds me of a weird, obscure fan art version of Marge Simpson. Like the skin color, the hair, the height. I know I don't do fan art and when I do it, it's so, so far removed from the uh, original inspiration. But for me, this is Marge Simpson. Yeah, I think this was prompt number one, day one, blobs. I was playing with my metallic pat palette that I got very much roasted for because I didn't know where it was made and I thought it was Japanese, but it's actually like a Chinese ripoff. So thank you everybody for roasting me in the comments for that video. Yeah, just trying to experiment with all the metallics from this palette in this artwork. That's just what she's about. She's not that metallic to be quite honest, but you know, she has a kind of subtle sheen. For some reason, pink just fixes all. Every time I add a little bit of pink into something, it's like, oh, okay, that's what it needed. Another spread from my April art challenge. This one, this the prompt for this one was circle, square, and then I don't remember, two colors, I think was the prompt for this one. Yeah, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that this is my favorite spread in the sketchbook. I just like the bug, I like, Rainbow Girl, I like Leaf Girl. I think all together they work awesome. Look, I'm just vibing them. Mixing in the girls with like an element and obscuring the face a little bit as well. Makes them a little coquettish, really sweet, demure, playful, like they're little nymph angels playing in a field of flowers. They're just a little bit whimsical. Also ginkgo leaves are gorgeous and I wanna pop them more in more artworks. I love the experimentation of the shapes in this as well. I just feel like I was just, I was living, I was vibing this spread. You know, getting high off my own fumes, like being such a narcissist, really loving myself. <laughs> Again, some more face studies. I think these are from 
the April Art Challenge once again. Experimenting with colours, obscuring the faces, doing some more strange obscured angles. So for me, I just find them a little bit more beautiful and like you're, you know, just seeing and accidentally capturing a candid shot of somebody like on the side. And this girl over here, I, I liked her in theory, but then like her face just didn't quite come out the way I wanted. But that being said, I do like her body. It's just that proportionally, I just ran out of space for a lot of things. So yeah, in future, I just got to work on that a little bit more. So everything fits on the page a little bit more uh, succinctly and tightly. So some more pages from the art challenge. These two here, I feel like are really strong. And by the way, I don't think I finished the art challenge. Just FYI, I, I was planning to, but it just never happened. Because again, I'm trying to make a tarot card deck. That being said, I really liked the way this girl turned out. This is kind of the direction that I like to possibly go in. It's just a cool experiment for me. I feel like it's a little successful, just a tad. Um, this girl here, I, I'm not vibing whatsoever. She just reminds me of like an old fashioned illustration that I would do back in the day and I'm just, I'm hating it. I just associate it way too much with my old fashion days and it's not a vibe. Does not pass the vibe check. Okay, so you guys might be familiar with this one over here. I think the rest of the journal probably, yeah, will probably be familiar because last couple of pages are from a video called Finishing My Sketchbook, which you can catch up on as well. Like I said, I don't, I didn't finish the April Art Challenge. I went up, I went halfway and then stopped. Mama's got a bunch of other stuff to work on. This girl over here, you will recognize as well from a movie. So if you know the film, pop it below. Like I mentioned before, I'm not sure if it was in this video or not. The acrylic gouache opera pink paint is incredible. I love discovering this combination of mediums. You know, I'm not somebody who's super obsessed with the mediums I use. Like obviously I have my favorites, but I don't like to restrict myself too much and define myself by a medium. But this combo over here is exactly what I'm going to use a lot more of in my uh, new sketchbook. So I put a base of opera pink and then I drew the outline with a big pen and then I used some watercolor on top of it and then some like white acrylic for the uh, highlights. Toned paper is a product for a reason. It's just so much less work when you have a, a tone behind your drawing. Work smart, not hard. Okay, moving on. So this page over here, trying to do a lot more characters with clothes, really see what the body looks like with clothes because I'm just really not used to studying those all too often. I'm still trying to figure out a lot of like crouched positions because I feel like I'm doing standing positions pretty well but when it comes to like seated positions or crouch positions I still have a lot of work uh, to go. Here I'm just doing a little landscape of NYC trying to do some buildings. The saturation of the watercolors that I use aren't deep enough for the tones that I'm trying to get to like really give my pieces that in-depth contrast. Everything's always a lesson and I think learning my lesson on mediums was a valuable one. This image here got me in trouble with YouTube. So hopefully, you know what? I'm just gonna cover her. So let's just remember what she looks like. And yeah, here just trying again to do some more studies, doing the same combo of mediums as this lass over here. It's hard for me to give my more reflective views on this particular spread because I kind of just did it recently. And I also just posted that video very recently too. So, and then also here, this is like really where I'm like, I'm so sick of the sketchbook. and I just wanna move on to the next one. And I just, I call this filler. This is hardcore filler right here. This character here is from my last sketchbook tour. So you might remember it, but this is a little postcard that's available on my shop as well. And you guys, that is the 2019, 2020 sketchbook tour. Okay, you guys, that is the end of part two and the end of the sketchbook tour for 2020. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe. Remember, I'm trying to get to 30K very soon. Before the end of the year would be better than 2021, but we'll see and we'll get there eventually. If you want more videos that are sketchbook related, pop them in the comments below. Um, I'd love to know what sketchbook content you guys want to see. So yeah, pop that below and uh, subscribe so you don't miss it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Yeah.